Hello, mate. Oh my God, there you are. How you doing? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know, like sometimes where Zoom just takes forever to, it just does the spinning circle for ages. And it, but here I am. <laughs> How there you, doing, you are. How are you, man? I'm good, dude. Whereabouts are you? California. Oh, nice. How's uh, how's California? Um, it's like very. You want to see outside my window? Yeah, sure. That's all, that's all smoke. I can't really see it. I've mainly got the background. Your uh... oh, oh, that's right. Because I have that thing on. Oh, so oh it's like of those wildfires. Is there at the moment? Yeah, there's a shit ton of fires right now. And um, I don't know, man. That's it's yeah. so like crazy. Like the the sun is red, like red, like. Fucking hell! I mean, it was already feeling pretty apocalyptic, and now you have to put up with a red sun and smoke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how have, you, uh, how have you been the last few months? How's uh, how, how's your how's your coronavirus been? Um, I. You know, we lost a family member to the, the virus. Oh, uh, shit, I'm sorry, man. And then I had it. Yeah. But I survived. I was yeah. good. You know, I'm, I'm young and, and vibrant and good health. Yeah. Um, but I loved it. I loved every second of it. Like, I was taking pictures in the grocery stores, like, when that was real, like, nothing on the shelf. Yeah, 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 yeah. Watching the best and worst of mankind is really... Yeah can move a heart you know yeah sure <laughs> what about you, man? it's been okay yeah I, like i was so i'm i'm in toronto um in canada obviously all, all my i'm from liverpool in england so all of my friends and family are all back in uh back in england and um yeah it was like it was good it was all quite productive at first you know the first month or two when everybody realized that you could write songs over zoom i have all the recording equipment in my apartment so it was productive because i could write with my friends in nashville and la and, and some back in liverpool without leaving my apartment and i i got some good songs and stuff and thought okay this is this is good um but then i i caught it as well i caught oh, it. you did yeah it, it you know again i'm pretty young too so so i was never wasn't worrying or anything like that but you know so but you suddenly feel quite vulnerable you suddenly you kind of feel quite on your own you know what i mean and and everything uh i think from a mental health perspective just gets a little bit tougher to not be around people you know um so so i finally just booked a flight back to liverpool i'm gonna go back to liverpool on saturday you know just to go and Give me more my hug and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, just be around, just be back home for a bit. I think will be, uh, it'll be good. I think. Good it, how was your fever with that? So, like, I, I'm trying to think. What with me, I, I was like, like, just I was super fine, and then the next day, just so tired. You know, the sort of tiredness, which is just like I can't even think properly and. You know, your, your brain feels really foggy. I don't know if you got, yes. got that part of it. In, in like yeah, even weeks after, like I was yeah. like walking around and just not feeling me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know how to explain that. Like as no. if there's something yeah. inside of me, yeah. like, or blocking certain brain waves that I can't think yeah. the way I normally do. Totally. I think that is one of the, one of the sort of afterwards symptoms I, 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 that, I, that I read about. I had a thing where I, I drove my van for the first time and I was just sat at like a green traffic light and it just didn't make any sense. I couldn't remember how they worked for a second and like, you know, and everything catches up again, but, oh man, so strange. Do you feel like you've completely recovered now or? or... Yeah. yeah. Um, but like for month, like maybe a month or two after, and then my brain starts like, what happens if it really is 5G? What happens if 5G is getting right. everyone? <laughs> so that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I, I still don't feel completely back to back to normal. And it's really hard to tell, you know, when you're just inside on your own all the time, you really overthink things a lot, don't you? And then I think it's probably a good chunk of it's relatively psychosomatic, I think. Yeah. I don't really know. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's so tough for, I think it, 
it's everybody is experiencing their own version of it being tough ultimately aren't they every now and then you talk to somebody that's absolutely loving it <laughs> and is yeah. really like but you know everybody has their versions don't they and it's all a, it's all a scale i suppose of it being difficult for people did you write during the lockdown yeah i i i am um, i mean I, I still am now i like i say it's been a great thing to learn that you can do it over zoom usually obviously i would go down to nashville or have writing sessions in toronto um but at the start of all this when everybody was locked down it just wasn't an option so uh, i think everybody just had to uh it must be the same with you as well suddenly using zoom a lot more but but um everyone had to do it and it was quite satisfying really because then i started getting some songs that i thought were genuinely good you know you just have to work within quite um thin parameters you know you can't rely on kind of turning up and just vibing it out a little bit that's not really possible on zoom but as long as somebody has uh quite a strong concept or maybe a whoever is producing it, the, the session, maybe they've got quite a good start to a song, then it can, then it can work, you know? You just have to, you have to um, ration it a little bit because you can't really do longer than three or four hours on Zoom. Yeah. But the great thing is then you can like, you can get a voice note, you know, on your iPhone of a thing and then, and then, and then I can record the vocal here and then I can email that over it to, to somebody, you know, and then they'll send the thing back and it, and a song just slowly builds up like that. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a really great thing. I think we're really lucky that we live in this, in a time where the technology is as advanced as it is, you know, to deal with a, a pandemic like this. Yeah. I think, I think we're, even if you think even 10 years ago, that wouldn't have been possible. I suppose like Skype was a thing, but it wouldn't have been particularly conducive, I don't think. It's not like it was easy to get a lot of people in from different places, you know, on yeah. one call. So, and then the fact that we've all got every movie available to us ever made. <laughs> <laughs> every song is on our, you know I mean? You just have to have Spotify and Netflix and you're kind of good, aren't you? It, it definitely is. How did you, so the first time I heard Banners was on Alt Nation. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. And... And it was, it's such a beautiful song. Like oh. uh, your, your whole art itself in general um, is beautiful. Like the first time, like the first few times I heard it, it would be, so every time I hear any of your songs, it reminds me of my children. No way, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason why it reminds me of my kids is because we would be driving home and we go out on adventures every weekend. So yeah. like we go to abandoned um, like haunted houses or uh, um, long hikes or, you know, we're always out and we do it from eight o'clock in the morning to like one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So really, and always at the end of the night, the kids are sleeping in the back and I look in the rear view mirror, mirror and I, yeah. I hear your music. Oh man. That's, that's that's I'm awesome. looking their fat faces, you know, their <laughs> fat faces. Yeah. And um, it's always my North Star with you in, in your music. Oh, man, that's, that's, that's lovely. I, I, to be honest, like, even when I was first writing it um, with, with the producer that I did a lot of recording with, um, we, we talked a lot about, like, the music that mattered to us and, and why it mattered. Um, and the, the, the real drive with doing those recordings was to try to provide other people with those experiences that bands had done for me when I was a kid or and still do now. Or not for, to provide the experience, but to soundtrack it, you know? Yeah. And to, and to um, you know, so I, I think I'm, I'm always very conscious that I'm writing it for other people. I, I, I don't feel like I write it for myself. Um, you know, a lot of songwriters will say, oh, uh, I just wanted to write something for myself. And then if, if people like it, then great. Um, and that's definitely a, a really useful way of doing it for them. But for me, I really do try to create something that, that, that will matter to other people, you know? So it's really great to, so it's always lovely when, when 
people tell you of their experiences with it. it it's really the thing that that genuinely makes it all worthwhile. Because like once you've once you've like I don't really feel like any of those songs are mine. They don't feel like my songs. What once they're released, they become everybody else's, don't they? And they become they become ev like like I say that the soundtrack to I don't know somebody's first ever breakup or maybe may, you know often people say oh I put this song on a playlist or a CD and I sent it to this girl and now this girl is my wife or something like that and that's the entire point of the whole of the whole thing it's 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 uh it's it's lovely um to get to do that really and it's so lovely that people take the time to tell you about it as well how does how do you start do you just one day pick up a guitar and or like who bit you to make you love music oh man i i'm just so lucky basically with my with how my childhood worked out and uh, who my parents are really because i i am um, when i was when i was six i think i was six there was a, a nativity um do you have a nativity do you have nativity plays in america you know like christmas plays like yeah uh, um, you know, with like the donkey and Mary and Joseph and all that. And for some reason, I think I, I, I and everybody else in my class had been put on like, I don't know what we were. I feel like we were going to be dressed like angels, but with tambourines and stuff. You're know, like, you know, like wood blocks. And um, for some reason, there was a, a part in the play that had a, a, a singing ox. There was like an, someone was dressed as like an ox and there was yeah. going to be a solo. So everybody, um, everybody auditioned for it. It wasn't like, would anybody like to? It's just that the class did. And it just turned out that I had quite a nice little singing voice for a six year old kid. <laughs> you know, it's just a, so I was this singing ox and, and the school teacher, who I think was called Mrs. Kale, uh, said that I should audition to be in the in Liverpool there's two really beautiful cathedrals and and one of them is huge it's the Anglican Cathedral is massive and and uh, has a really great choir there and I uh she said that I should audition to be in the choir basically which I which I did and and ultimately got in and it's a it's a so all of a sudden my life became uh eventually after school Five days a week, basically after school, most days, and then all day Saturday and all day Sunday, I, I went and uh, rehearsed and and sang it in the in the cathedral. So you you got to first of all, it's it's a such a beautiful building. It's like it's one of the last Gothic buildings in the world, and or you know one of the last great ones. And it it it's like I think it's like the fifth biggest building in the world or something mad like that, or the fifth biggest church. I think it's really big. So you're singing in this beautiful place and you're performing this music. Some of it was written in the 1600s and 1700s and, you know, Mozart and Schubert and all that kind of stuff. And it just gets into your bones, like the, the, the love of it and, and, the, and the standard that's required because you're, you're performing in this building and you have to pay homage to the people that built it and ultimately to God, you know, if, if, mm -hmm. if you believe in that. Um, but so... From that point on, it's, it, it's just in you, I think. The other thing is that my dad is a record producer. Um, oh. So I got to spend a lot of time in uh, recording studios when I was a kid. And I just thought they were the greatest places. I just, I just, it, I just wanted to be in them all the time, <laughs> you know? Um, and I just used to think the bands were the coolest people. And I just wanted to be around them. I didn't even necessarily want to be a singer. I just wanted to be involved where all this equipment was and the the smell of those old desks and the and the. It was always so magical to me that you could start a day with nothing but empty channels on a desk, and then by the end of it, you have this like, this thing, you know, and and the fidelity of sound in a recording studio. You know, it's so much higher than you get out of a CD or an MP3, obviously. It's that's just quality of noise. And it's so, it's music louder than you've ever heard it. When you're a little kid, it's just such a mind blowing thing. So I just, I think from the age of like 11, being in the studio, I just needed to be around it, basically. I was a real church guy. 
for I was gonna be a priest. No uh, way. Oh wow. I had two different directions, so I it split. Um, I was gonna be. I was gonna go into. Um, I I ended up going to the military, and then yeah. but every single place I would stop. You know, I've been around except for Europe. It's the only place I haven't been. I literally visited every single cathedral. Wow. No in, way. In whenever, because there's something magical about that, about yeah. a cathedral. And at the, at, there was a little turbulence in my life where I was questioning whether or not there is a creator. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but it's still drawn to those churches. Oh, man. Totally. And it's like, it's like the feeling and not, and I'm not trying to like mark out to you, but it's the same equivalent feeling as when I'm in the car with my kids, when I was, yeah. when I listened to your music. So yeah, that, yeah. It, it feels something, something spiritual about it. Totally. Yeah. Well, I, I think w with these places, I, I think there is a, there is a, you know, a, an otherworldly spirituality that comes from it. Obviously, they're designed for a creator or in the glory of that creator. But there's the other side of it, which is just the human scale of it and the fact that these places were built over sometimes generations of families and stonemasons that would pass down their craft and their love of this building all the way. You know, some of them took 100 years to build. So, And you have these, you have such pride and precision that go into the building that i think that energy just stays and it just swirls around it you know and the peace that comes from the positive energy of people of people wanting to create a beautiful thing you know because that's what they and their family have done and the, and this building will define generations of their family as well as the fact that you have people going to have a religious experience you know that that they're there to I think that energy just exists and it just stays and you feel it, don't you, when you when you walk into them, I think. Yeah. I also think like soccer grounds are the same thing in that I, I think they are like, because they're just cathedrals to, they're cathedrals to a football team or to, yeah. or to whatever. And, and I think you walk into them, especially the older ones like Liverpool's, which has been there for since 1880, I think. And when you think about all of the, the explosions of happiness when a goal goes in or the explosions of despair when it goes in the wrong end uh, and all that energy that swirls around but is ultimately being positively sent towards the 11 players on your on the pitch are you a football player? Of, oh man yeah it's my main passion in my life <laughs> yeah have you been to brazil no i haven't no oh my goodness so not only do they have awesome cathedrals yeah but there are places like you're going down like a main street and yeah. like i'm not even playing like when i say 50 like fields just yeah. in a row yeah just for miles and because right. they love i guess they love their they love their football you know yeah well i, I think the, the the really great thing about f football is that it really is a you know, you can be the poorest person in the world, but as long as somebody has a football, <laughs> you don't even need shoes to play it, you know? Yeah. It just needs, which is why you get some of the greatest footballers actually who come from really quite poor backgrounds, you know? I think Maradona did, didn't he? And, you know, and, and but but all he needed was a street <laughs> yeah. and a football and, and then and everybody has the opportunity to, do to you, play it. Do you play every day? Soccer? Well, I, I used to a lot when I was when I was a kid in England, but I live in Toronto now, so I haven't really found uh, haven't really found my my group of people really. Yeah, but I I obsess about it every day. <laughs> it's quite a family enterprise, really, with my fan, Liverpool Football Club. Are, so it's really all that we talk about as a family. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's awesome. <laughs> so, what do you have now? What do you have coming out? Um... Yeah, so we, Just I mean, so like, I mean, it's like, so, so, so I have a song called Someone to You, which is, which is had a bit of an, you know, uh, 
which is, has had a, a bit of an uptake in, in popularity again. So, so we're just um, really doing everything I can to... Is that by TikTok? Is TikTok giving that up? Yeah, it's really an interesting case, really, because it, it was already my most popular song. And, you know, when it first came out about three years ago, we worked it to alternative radio in, in America, which is why it was on um, Alt Nation, obviously. And, uh, and it, like, every time we got a station to pick it up, it always did really well in that market. We could, just could never get quite enough stations onto it to, to give it the momentum and make it into an a, a alternative hit, really. Um, but it was always, like, my most popular song, and I, I think it was maybe up to something like 80 million streams on Spotify, you know. More most. than that. But well, I think it is now, but I put back... <laughs> oh, back then. Before, before TikTok got invented, I think it was, you know, it, it, it sort of, I thought it had done its thing really. And yeah, and then obviously it, it people started making videos to it on TikTok, <laughs> um, which is great, you know, and, and it sort of speaks to the thing that I was saying about how like, you just want to create soundtracks for people and you want, you know, you just want to make people's day a little bit better. So the the fact that you can, see these videos and you can see people consuming it in their own way and they're being creative with it in their own ways is really great to see it really it, it's it's a real privilege that they do it to you know my song is one of the ones they do it to so are you they're... tempted or by any maybe tempted or have you done it um listen or like look up the hashtag or your song and then see what people use it to T to be honest, no. Like I, I'm very shy, <laughs> and, and I just feel so self-conscious, you know. And uh, and um, and you know, so I, I, I did check it out a little bit just because I wanted to engage with people, and I just wanted to say, you know, oh, uh, you know, I, I just wanted to be in some level engaged with it. But I also just don't. I also just want to remain as grounded as possible, really, with everything. And I, you know. I just want to. I just want to work as hard as I can, to. To take things as far as I, as I can, really. So it's brilliant that TikTok is a thing for it. But but it, you know what we're working towards at the moment is. is it's getting, really beautiful, man, to go yeah. and look at the songs. It right. really, really, really is. Yeah, yeah. I guess I, I just I'm so self conscious <laughs> somehow. I can't really. <laughs> You just mute your phone and then watch them. I know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is the other side of it is that I've heard that song so many times. <laughs> as, long as, as long as there's a mute, a mute button on it, you know. Um, yeah, so so it's just a case of um, of trying to keep building it, and it's obviously becoming more and more a thing on on the radio in um, in a lot of different countries now. So. Um, so that's the, the focus at the moment, but at the same time, obviously I need to figure out whatever song com, comes next. So I have a few that are, that are finished and I, I'm just gonna spend the next few months uh, writing more and then hopefully we'll have a good, uh, a good pool of songs to pick from, whatever, whatever people think might be the, the best one to do next. Then, you know, it'd be good to have a choice of a few. Dude, you you're, it, you're amazing. Oh, <laughs> you nice really one. are. <laughs> well, I, like I say, I, I, I think I'm, it's, it's funny, a c career in music really, because at first you're just trying to get somewhere, aren't you? you you're just trying yeah. to figure out how to get your foot in the door. And, and at that point, your, your motivations are relatively selfish because you're thinking, how do I make this work? And how can I have a, a career in this? But the, after a while, that isn't your focus anymore like your focus is um it's honestly making people happy it, like it, it's it's just being responsible for and the, and the way i sort of see it is that like if every stream is just making someone's day a tiny little bit better and you can have this many streams and then this is how many days you're making that tiny little bit better i'm not saying you're going to change their world but if you can just be part of if you can just be part of making people happier as opposed to being part of making people sadder well that's that's where you want to get isn't it really and you yeah. just want to be you don't want to be a politician 
is what you're saying. Well, I mean, <laughs> without, just without, going, without going too politic, politically with it, it's so addictive. It's so addictive making people happy, the opportunity to do it. And, and you play gigs and you look at their faces and they just look so happy. It's so addictive. Um, and I, I really don't understand why politicians aren't more addicted to it. I'm not saying all politicians, because I think some of them really are in it to, to make a difference. But so many of them just see it as a profession, as a career, don't they? And mm. it's so selfish that I don't understand why they, they don't get addicted to this opportunity they have to make the lives of millions of people better. It makes absolutely no absolutely no sense to me I'm, at all. I'm, I agree with you 100%. You almost feel like, just have a go. Just have a go and see see how you feel about it. <laughs> because yeah. I bet you'll like it. <laughs> just try. But, but, and I, I, it, you know, I, there's been, there's so many things that uh, you just despair about, don't you? I, you know, in England at the moment, England is, is in a really selfish, political time for itself, you know, and, and the whole leaving the European Union was so heartbreaking, so heartbreaking that I was so angry about it. Um, but, the, the, you know, the thing I just thought was, well, you know what, you can't change this. So I suppose what you have to try to do is just try to be a positive influence and just try to, you know, do what you can do to make people feel safe and you know, when you play gigs and you just try to make people feel safe, <laughs> you can understand that out there it's all crazy and whatever, but at least in here we can all look after each other and we can all make sure that we all feel safe and and then maybe everybody leaves and maybe everybody for a day feels better and maybe they're nice to somebody else and, you know, I think yeah, hopefully it's possible to that we can all we can all make our own little positive influences in life. I don't really know. You can only try, can't you, I suppose? You only try, right? <laughs> so you're going back this Saturday, back home? Yeah, well, I I, I had, um, I was hanging on here uh, to, there's a, a TV thing uh, that was potentially going to play in New York. So it made sense to stay in Toronto, but I think the show has only just gone back. Um, a couple of days ago and I think they're still figuring out if they can have music on there or you know how difficult it is with with COVID so the date just got moved back a few times um, and I'm just desperate to just get back home just from a mental health perspective really. yeah um, so I figured so I was hanging on in Toronto and then I just realized you know what I'm just going to go back to England and then if they need me it's only a seven hour flight you know it's not like I can just fly from there as opposed to an hour flight from Toronto. So I'm, I'm going to yeah go back on Saturday, I think. And uh, yeah, like I say, give my mom a hug and uh, <laughs> see my friends for a little bit. Um, I think it, it'll be good, I think. What's your favorite dish your mom cooks? <laughs> it was funny, really. My mom was just there. Uh, my mom, I think, is quite delighted that I'm going back. And she was just asking me what um, English food that I missed. Um, and I was just saying that I think I might have to, I, I'll, I'll buy, I'll buy us all, my stepdad and my mom and myself a, a curry when we get back because basically curry is like the, the English national dish. <laughs> really. curry? curry as in Indian food. Yeah. Oh, oh, I just had curry last night. My wife made it. It was awesome. Oh, no way. Oh, yeah. nice. Well, weirdly, I suppose because of the, uh, because of the imperial nature of the British Empire, they have been, you know, there's a lot of really good Indian restaurants in England, basically. <laughs> um, so I'm looking forward to, to doing that. And of, of course, like fish and chips are yeah. great. <laughs> you yeah. wouldn't want to have them all the time because you would have a heart attack, but you know. Have you played them in Toronto? Yeah, it, obviously it's all good. It's just never quite, it's just never quite the same, you know. <laughs> Um, but but the food in Toronto is great. Toronto is such a, um, it, it is a very mixed multicultural society mm -hmm. really. So the, there really is a lot of, uh, I, 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 there's so many restaurants here. I don't understand how they all stay in business really. <laughs> yeah, I, don't... I, 
Um, when I was in the service, they sent me to uh, Victoria. Oh, right, yeah. And it's just a hop, skip, and jump from Toronto. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but, like, all, amazing uh, food there, beautiful people, and right. everyone's super nice. <laughs> yeah, they are in, they are very, very polite. I think the, the interesting thing about Canada as a society and as a culture is that it's still so new it's so brand new as a country that i think they are still generationally very aware of how important immigration is into the country and they are aware that they wouldn't have their culture and unless they had immigration so i mean i don't know because i'm not a minority but i am an immigrant and and uh, it feels to me like you know they are very happy to have people for, they're very happy for people to come in and still be for example serbian or still be still keep their culture but just pass it on kind of thing it seems to me i am not serbian but i do have some serbian friends and they seems to me i'm still encouraged to be serbian you know whereas in england which has been around for so long you know immigration is a different issue there and and then it fuels fuels racism obviously which is ridiculous because immigration is so important yeah. <laughs> to countries and to, to cultures that's why that's why it's important to us as a race you know of course of course otherwise you, what would you end up with <laughs> you know the same boring shit the same exactly the, the same boring shit and i don't know what 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 food would be like in england it would just be potatoes <laughs> 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 you know so Potatoes and onions, <laughs> I think, and bread. So, um, so yeah, I, I've I've found it um, a very welcoming uh, country, Canada. But I, I found America to be, uh, you know, again, I am white <laughs> and mm -hmm. male, so I just can't I just can't speak for other people's experiences. But you know, I, I found Canada and America to be to be really welcoming to me, and I, I'm really grateful, really for for that you know i wouldn't have a career without either of those countries yeah what are you interested in right now musically like what do you what are you listening to yeah well i i it, it's um it's interesting when you write and record music for your job because your relationship with it changes quite a lot so like it becomes in my experience it becomes quite hard to listen to new music in the way that it's designed to be listened to which is as an emotional explosion whereas when it's your job you listen to it very analytically like you're listening to it as a collection of parts maybe you're listening to how the kick drum pattern changes from the verse into the chorus or or oh that's an interesting time to use a harmony or that's an interesting harmony to use you know what i mean and 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 you're trying to figure out because this, you know, you think this is a great song. I need to figure out what they're doing because then I can try and do my version of that. It becomes quite exhausting to listen to new music. So I, I find myself uh, the music I listen to are bands that I used to love before it was my job in some weird nostalgia kind of way. So, you know, that there's a, there's a band called Elbow who are from the UK that I that I really love. Um, I listen to Bon Iver a lot because uh, I used to love Bon Iver before and obviously, the, the, you know, and also because Bon Iver is just music that I can't do. I couldn't do that if I tried. So there's no sense of like, well, I can't try to copy that. I can't you listen to that, do that. You can get lost yeah. in that one, right? Yeah, oh, it's brilliant. Um, but yeah, and you know, I love The Killers and I love Coldplay and I love Arcade Fire and Bob Dylan and... Uh, you know, Bruce Springsteen stuff, you know, hopefully I have an all right music taste, I think. But it, but I think, but but the one thing I would learn to love again is, is uh, I, I would love to learn again, sorry, is consuming new music in the way that I used to. It's something I just have to work at a little bit, I think. Ooh. Dude, I I appreciate our time. Thank oh you man, it's so lovely. So to, it's lovely to uh, talk to you, man. Um, what we're going to do is uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this the cover story for um, November. Oh, amazing! Oh, that's uh, uh, that's such a privilege. Thanks so much. So uh, I I just enjoy like 
I, I want you to know that we support you. Everything oh, you do, with every social media post, we're putting a like on it. Um, oh, man. Just thank I, you. I, I really, I, I really appreciate it, man. It, it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's really not an individualistic thing, this, you know, it's such a community thing. And uh, it's so great that, like, there's no artist that would be anything without the support of, of people like you, you know what I mean? So I, I appreciate it so much, man. And I appreciate you taking the time to have a chat. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was amazing and it's a truly a privilege for me to oh, amazing well, well keep in touch man if there's anything else you ever need just give me give me a shout when when everything comes up i'll send it i'll send you something on instagram yeah please do man and uh, when the coronavirus isn't a thing let's go and look at some cathedrals together at That's some point <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm definitely interested buddy amazing all right, dude. Well, uh, enjoy uh, enjoy your apocalyptic California. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, dude. Great to talk to you, man. It was awesome talking with you. Speak to you in a bit, mate. Bye bye.